All right, so welcome back to a new one on Bidwick 5. And this one is going to be the key track plus. So the old key track was called key track, but now it's called the relative key track. Now, so you can understand the plus. I'm going to be going to the old one. What this does is going to recognize which key you're playing. And it's going to be, you know, key tracking that. So this will output the modulation depending on which uh, the value of the note. So if I play low notes, notice that the dot is right here at the bottom. But if I play a higher note, it's going to be maybe right there at the beginning, you know, at the middle. If I play a higher note, it's going to be up. So this will output a different instruction depending on where you're playing on the keyboard. Just to give you an example, I'm going to be mapping the filter. So if I play a low key, uh, just super low key, notice that the cutoff is way low. As I go, keep going up on pitch, this dot and the instruction is going to keep moving up. So this is the good old, you know, key track that we get on most synthesizers is the keyboard control. If I go to higher pitch, the dot is going to be higher. So the instruction, the modulation is going to be moving the cutoff, the cutoff frequencies up. Now still all of this is just about the key track plus, not the key track. This is what the old one does. I'm going to bring the key track plus. So it's the same idea. It has the same purpose. And as you can see, it's just pretty much the same. But now it's using the segments engine. And right from the start, you get, you know, the usual classic key tracking. If I play a low note, it's going to be around here. As I keep going up, it's going to be moving up. And whatever we map right here, let me just map it to something. If I do the same thing, then before, notice that the modulation or the instruction moves up the cutoff. So if we use it this way, it would be the same than using the relative key track. Now this can be a lot more fun because now since we are using the segments engine, we can do whatever the F we want. Maybe I can draw something right here and some of the lower notes are going to be right there at the middle or maybe they're going to be up and now the higher keys are going to be down, right? And let me just make it more obvious. I'm going to be bringing more filter. I'm going to be playing a low key. And notice that the filter is going up instead of just going down. If I go to lower keys. Maybe I go to higher keys. Now the higher keys are going to be softer. The cutoff is going to go down on the higher keys. But if I go to the super highs, they're going to start going up. I know it's a little bit too bright, but that's the way it works. Okay, so I have something random, different keys on different ranges. So if I go back and I play it back and bring this, it will give you, it will tell you, you know, where you're playing. So now what you can do, you can just, you know, use the segments engine to define where those keys are going to be playing. Maybe this one is going to be right, this one, maybe it's going to be low, this one super low and so on, and so on, and so on. And if you wanted to, you can bring whatever it is that you, you know, you have right here, predefined curves that you get for your key tracking. Now, these ones are the most common ones. These ones are just, you know, pretty normal uh, curves, but you can bring some crazy ones because it uses the segments, you know, the uh, MS, MSG, MSEG, or MSEC. So I can bring something like this and just, you know, get some some crazy modulation. Sometimes it's going to be up, sometimes it's going to be down. But that's it. It's key tracking, but expand it. Uh, another module added to the never ending list <laughs> of, of modulators. Right. So remember to like and subscribe if you like this one and uh, see you on the next one.